everyone and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we're going to be continuing work on the pas de deux quilt. So this is still the block of the month, month four, and this time we're going to be working on the checkers block. So definitely a step down in difficulty, thank goodness, this time around from that still point block. If you're interested in watching that, I'll link it either up there or down below. And you guys can check that out if you haven't already. We're going to continue working with Adida Sitar's beautiful fabrics. So when I first looked at the directions for this part of the quilt, I thought that we were going to be working with pink and purple color fabrics. But actually, as I read through and looked back, which was a good thing because I don't have very many purple fabrics from the laundry basket fabrics, unfortunately. So I'm hoping I might get some more of those because I actually did subscribe to her fabric bundle collection subscription that she sends every month. I haven't gotten mine yet, so I'll show you guys what that looks like whenever I get it. But I am super excited about that because I'm hoping I'll get some more fabrics for this quilt because I am getting a little bit low. All of that to say basically that really we're doing pink in a dark blue color. Now in Rachel Hauser's directions, her fabric shows different patterns for the pink, but a solid blue fabric. I'm not gonna be doing that. It's all laundry basket fabrics. And as you guys know, Adidas Sitar's fabrics are all very floral and very patterned. What I did do was try to stay away from anything that had a lot of white in it. So I wanted to keep my pinks and my blues as pink and blue as possible. And you'll see that as I cut everything out and lay it all out, um, you'll notice that I really tried to avoid those fabrics with a bunch of white. It doesn't mean that they're completely devoid of white. I can't do that. Again, it's Adidas fabric. That's There's some white in it, but they're really, really pretty. And I'll show you, here are a few of my pinks. Unfortunately, they're is not really anything new there because we are, like I said, getting towards the end of the bunches that I have of fabric. And then here are the beautiful blues. I think we've used all of these blues as well. So nothing super exciting new here, but we have not used them in this way. So I am excited about that. So as I lay these blocks out, one of the things that you might notice is that prior to this, I laid all of the blocks out and basically tried to keep the color sort of scattered about. So this is a scrappy quilt, but I am one that likes to do scrappy quilts that are more put together. Um, so I don't want to end up having multiple fabrics right on top of each other. I want to have them spaced out, not necessarily evenly, but at least spaced out. So laying out all of my blocks in that pattern and then stacking them makes it so that as I lay out this quilt block, I should be able to avoid placing those blocks right next to each other, or ending up with two, two of the same pattern so close together. Okay, just so you can see everything laid out, I kind of had to extend my table because I definitely was running out of room. So now what I'm going to do is take these two columns and sew them together in a row so that I can then have those two bound and then I will just go back and forth between each row until I've done a th the third row the fourth row, the fifth row, and so on. I might look a little bit and see if I want to change any placements. I know out of all of it, I had these two right here that were the same, so I may be able to swap them out. Um, but all the blue ones, for the most part, stayed pretty separate. And um, overall, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it ended up looking out. So. Okay, so I thought I would stop and show you guys the webbing technique that I'm using. I know some of you probably already know this and I have done it before in one of my other quilts in order to just keep everything in line. It's a great way, especially when you have pieces that you've laid out and you really don't want them to move, it's a great way to have them stay in that spot and not worry that as you pick up and quilt, you've messed them up because I have definitely done that. 
multiple times. And sometimes I don't realize it until I've done most of what I was piecing. And then that's really sad. The worst is when you're piecing an entire quilt like together, like you've laid out all the blocks are sewn together and you just gotta sew a few pieces together. Oh my gosh, that's the worst. But let me show you. Okay, so here is my webbing technique and this is the row whoa, that I just did. And so you can see what I did initially was sew these two rows or these two columns together and then I sewed on the next column and then the next column and everything stays nice and lined up and you kind of know what you're doing. So that's really nice. And then I just have kept everything over here lined up and so I'll just stack all of these one on top of each other. And when I'm ready to do the next row, take that whole stack, place it right here and then I just pick up and go. And it makes it so easy. At the end, what I'll do is I will take this, flip it over. I will press my seams open and then I will sew each row together. And then I will press those open. It just really helps it to go very quickly, but it also helps to keep everything lined up so that as you're sewing it, you don't flip blocks around. Alright everybody, that is this block completed and it's a pretty large block but I love how it turned out. All of the checkers on there and even though these blue squares are not solid, I feel like they're dark enough and contrast enough with the pink that it looks really good. And it was really nice to go back to something so much more simple to do. So it was a nice break, nothing difficult, just some nice quarter inch sewing of square blocks together, lining up. And I love, one of the things that I love about doing the webbing design is that each time you join a seam together, they're so much easier to join together because they have their little, they're like pulled to each other because the strings are attached and it so it makes it so 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 much easier. Now I do sometimes have to clip those strings whenever I'm ironing because it doesn't want to lay flat. You know, I don't think that would be as big a deal if you were not ironing them open, but if you were ironing them to one side. But as you can see, I like to iron them all open and it just makes everything sort of lay down a lot nicer. So that is the end of month four of the Pas de Deux quilt. And since this is a six month block of the month quilt that we're doing, we only have two more months to go, which is just crazy, but so exciting because I know we're gonna start putting more and more of this quilt together and seeing it all come together, which is gonna be really fun to see because sometimes it really is hard for me to imagine this quilt block going with the yellow quilt block that we just did. I'm just excited to see how it all comes together, what parts I really love, what parts I think I could have done better, or maybe looking at would consider doing a different color selection, because I have enjoyed doing this quilt so much that I've almost considered doing it again, just to continue working on color combinations and doing different things, maybe using it for scrap fabrics to make beautiful scrap fabric quilts, but I'm not sure. 
that's home for the future. I don't have any set plans. I'm just enjoying the process as we go here. I hope that you all are enjoying it as well. And as always, I will list down below, this is Rachel Hauser's Pod to Do Block of the Month Quilt Kit. They, well, quilt kit design. There is no fabric that goes with it. So you can purchase her quilt design from her website and it comes with a myriad of other quilts where basically each month you're doing a test block for a larger quilt and she has all of the designs and fabric requirements and everything in there for that. Um, I do think that her patterns are very, very detailed. They do remind me of Elizabeth Hartman quilt patterns with lots of pictures and colors and helping you tips and tricks to help you make your quilt beautiful and sewn correctly. So as always, it's late. I've got to go and check on a sourdough starter and jump in the bed for the beginning of the next week. So I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.